Good morning, everyone. This is Rita, and uh, it is Sunday Slow Stitch Day with Rita. Um, I didn't get very much done on this um, over the week, last week, because I just ran out of time, and um, my I just wasn't, things weren't coming to me. So um, today I hope I can get a little bit more done. Um, I may do part of this video and then uh, stop and pause and then uh, show you how to put the backing on because I know a lot of you may already be done if you're doing this so you want to know how to do that I just can't get to that point because I still want to stitch and as long as I still want to stitch I can do the back so um, the first thing I want to do is on my regular YouTube channel um, which is just Rita Jensen I always got to find something to pick on. Uh, some of my uh, subscribers want to see my cross stitch that I've been working on and I just finished it. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, so I'm I'm just um, getting it ready to, I'll be uh, doing a stitching, uh, I forgot what you call it, but you go from one side to the next and sew it across to hold everything in. Then you could take your pens out because you don't know if those, unless you have stainless steel pens, then you can leave them in. But I don't know if these are stainless steel or not. I've, I have never done this before, this type of uh, framing, um, doing it myself. The frame I got at the thrift store for $1.99 and it has glass, um, just don't have it in here right now. So anyway, I just wanted to share that. It was a fun stitch to do and I'll get it displayed for spring. Um, so let's get to this. So what I did here was I got this photograph off of um, the Library of Congress. It's uh, free digitals or free copyright free, I should say, public dom domain. And so when I typed in uh, the Dust Bowl or Depression, you know, 1930s Depression, you don't type in Depression because you get all kinds of weird pictures. Uh, I found that out. Um, not everybody thinks of Depression the way I do. Um, so anyway, I printed it out on a piece of fabric. I had, oh, what I did was I put coffee dyed fabric on a sticky label. Okay, this is, um, I don't know if I can, let's see if I can get it off without, um, sometimes you just have to scratch it to get it off, but I don't want to ruin this because I can put this back in my printer and get maybe another photograph out of here. Um, I tried to get a bunch of photographs on one page and my computer didn't want to do that, so, I mean, it can do it, I just don't know how. But anyway, I got this one. I got this image. So that image was printed on this um, coffee dyed fabric, muslin, plain cotton muslin, and on a sticky back. And then you just trim it around, and your printer doesn't know any different. Um, it's all pretty thin, and it will, it should go through. Um, you know, you could have a problem. I don't know. Let me turn off my phone here. Okay. So I sewed around um, that. I put a little uh, decorative stitch there, sewed the top of this lace in the bottom, and then I found this little piece of lace, and I thought I would stitch this in here because I thought that would be kind of cute. Um, maybe I'll wait and cut it after I get it stitched. But... Um, and then I have burlap behind that. Oh, I'm just going to put this back in until I decide what else I want to do. Um, then I got some buttons. And I'm going to, you know, add these in. I don't know where. Not all of them. And I also have some copper pennies. And I was trying to find something that was old. This one's 1998, which is not that old, but this one is 19, oh, 1977. I thought that was 71. 
um, which would be 50 some years old. This is 1975, which is almost 50 years. Next year, would it be 50? Yeah, 50. But anyway, I thought the copper penny would be something that, you know, maybe this lady here. Now this picture depicts um, Route 66 where people traveled to from Oklahoma, uh, different places, the Midwest area, Texas, Oklahoma, to California. The people that were in Colorado probably traveled a uh, higher road up there. I think it might be 80. But anyways, um, I put this little piece here. I don't know if I'm going to use it there. I'm not sure I like it. Um, and then I thought I would um, stitch in, because this is all puffy right here, um, stitch the roof there and maybe the edges of the windows to give this a little bit more character. And I had this red and I have this red and I think I'm going to go with this one. This one, I probably need to dump it in some coffee dye and darken it a little bit, but I don't want it to be a burgundy. So uh, then I thought I could use these little circles, um, backgrounds for maybe the buttons, or I could, this one, I did it almost kind of looks like a flower, but I could have put a button in the middle of that. That really adds something to it. I have these little bitty ones. Um, I could do something like that or anything you have, any beads or whatever you want to use. You could put two rings of, of, uh, circles, make, you know, an outside ring. You can also decorate these, which I think I'm going to do that. You can, um, put a stem coming down. I did a stem. It's underneath here. You can't see it and you can't see this one hardly. But I changed my mind and decided to cover that. But you can take um, little leaves that you can cut out some fabric and add those to, you know, the stems if you want to do that. So I'm just trying to show you some of the options you have. And I also, I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday. Let me take this one off. I thought I would like it. I just don't know if I do. Um, and yesterday at Hobby Lobby, I found uh, these button buttons on thread, which they didn't have them for the longest time. So I'm glad they're back because I think that is kind of neat for the uh, edge of the page there. And then I also got, I wish they had had more of these little type of things. But these I'm going to cut, and I don't know if I'll use them on the front of this or, or not, but they're just little bumblebees, and I thought they would be cute stitched in here somewhere. Just a little bumblebee. And I got these china-looking buttons, and I thought I'm probably going to use this inside the journal because I thought it would be kind of cool that it looks like she brought her mother's uh, piece, a few pieces of china from from home. And um, what else? Um, I think that's about it. So let me get to stitching this little bit. Then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the backing. These little pennies, I thought, you know, maybe I'll just put those down here along the bottom. I'm just going to stitch over these to hold them in place. Yeah, those are kind of cute. Maybe I'll do that before we, before I finish here. Okay, this I have to sew down. So I'm going to take my floss here, and when you're doing floss, you always pull from the number side. So I'm just going to pull out maybe two lengths of that. And then I want to divide this into three. I don't want them as thick as that one is. So in order to get this to pull good, because it gets tangled, and it takes more time, but it's just all the way, it's just much easier in the as you go, because you will not get any tangles. Your thread will just come out like... Um, 
like you know if you had silk or something just pull one thread till you get how many you need and I'm telling you it it's a lifesaver when it comes to because otherwise you're gonna get these little tangles and you're gonna be frustrated I keep hitting the camera I hope I've got in the right um, space here so I hope everybody started off with a nice Sunday um, I don't know what I'll be doing t tomorrow but maybe I might be relaxing but I am working on a new cross stitch so that gets me see I get into phases where oh I want to do cross stitch oh I want to do um, slow stitching I try to do a little of it every day a little slow stitch a little cross stitch like in the morning I might do cross stitch and then the afternoon I'll do slow stitch unless the cross stitch is really calling me <laughs> then I will do all right and I'll put a knot this is pretty long I don't really use st string this long but it, I think it'll work. Okay, so what I thought I would do is I'm just going to outline the little, the roof of this. This is a gas station. And so I'm just going to go in and out on this. I thought I had everything, but I could have. Whoops, that's going to be in the way. So I'm just going to do a stab stitch because I want my. Okay, already we've got a tangle. Try to get one more in there. Got to remove this. It's not getting stitched down, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I think I want to go down, actually. Keep going. It's too thick to go, you know, in a like a running stitch. I'm gonna have to. I'm doing a running stitch, but it's like a stab stitch. I think somebody calls it chicken stitch, where you come up and stab down again. Like I guess a chicken eating seeds or something. Corn. Okay, I'll just go down sort of to the floor area so you can outline this building a little bit. Okay, and I'm just going to jump across because I don't... Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, like a window frame there. And so I'm going to go around and get to that window frame. I hope everybody's weather is good. We had rain. We had chilly week last week. And I doubt that it's over. We'll probably, but my grass is sky high. The gardener's coming today. You know, one day it's like, looks dead out there. And the next day it's, you know, flourish of branches and leaves and all that 
Not too many flowers. <clears throat> not in my yard, anyway. Um, actually, the little daffodils and things like that started coming up, and it was like one bloom. Um, there must be 10 or 20 out there. And, it, like, only one of them bloomed. So I don't know what the deal was, unless something ate them. I don't know if squirrels like the flowers or what. Okay, so now I'm going to go over. I really can't tell how big this window goes. But, I mean, I can't tell if it's a window or... Or part of the part of the siding. I feel like I'm doing a terrible job stitching. It's not even straight. Let me try to so I can't get it the needle. Okay. Probably my needle. Oh there it is. My little baskets. It seems like a lot of people are making these little baskets. I'm glad to hear that. Alright, where am I? I had it. Oh, I probably left it in the other room. If I can't find one, I grab another one. All right. So we're up here at this top corner. So I'm going to go around these window frames. Start at the bottom. I think my hands are cold this morning and they're not. They're not being as, um, cooperating or the stitch length is varied because I don't have a rhythm and you could do this with like a long stitch type thing if you wanted or a stem stitch would have been good I could have done a stem stitch Too late now, otherwise I have to take it all out. Yeah, I think a stem stitch would have looked better now that I think about it. Oops, I'm going too far. Where's the end of the window? Right there. window edge yeah there wasn't um, that many pictures that I could download that I could find that was you know copyright free they did have one lady and she was all over uh, the internet she's the one that took a lot of these the lady that took a lot of these photo photos during that time she must have been at one of their camps or something, and I can't remember her name now. I was going to write it down and forgot. But, um, yeah, it was her photography. 
that captured all these people and their crooked. Oh. Oh, wow. It's slow stitch, right? I'm going pretty slow. So if you guys watch uh, Roxy, uh, watch Rachel at Roxy's Creation when she does her slow stitch and then I think um, who was the other lady that's Corrine I think Corrine um, Christina oh I think Christina went somewhere else but anyway everybody was on some kind of a, a trip to Australia or yeah I think they all ended up in Australia And they've shown a lot of pictures of different shops, but we just don't have stuff like that here. We just don't. I wish we did. But I think in Australia they do a lot more handwork than uh, the Americans do. I mean, we used to do a lot of handwork, but it's, we've gotten away from it. Okay, so there's couple little windows and I think that's like a garage door so then up here um, probably should go up this I think I'll go up this um, it looks like the corner of the build no I think that might be I don't know. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put that in because I don't know what it is. But this is part of the roof. So I want to thank everybody who has subscribed to my channel. It's pretty overwhelming. I don't know, I think I said that last week, is if it was the slow stitch or my journal making. It's one or the other. Or both, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, um, yeah, a lot of people watched. And I think it's just somebody new to tune to. It's always fun to find uh, another like person. Okay, now up here I want to do... I don't know if I want to do like a, a seed stitch, but a checkerboard or V's or... Let's just um, do some boxes, I think. look Maybe it'll look like a shingle. So... We're just going to I might be making these too small, I don't know. Hope it still looks like a box. Oh my goodness, it's little tiny too tiny maybe uh, it's probably because I know I'm, that's what I want to do and it's not I think I'm gonna go a little bigger over here and see if I can't get it to balance out better I don't have any right or wrong way to do this. I just <laughs> jump around and
Gotta stay on the roof part. My needle doesn't want to move. There we go. I like to watch some of the ladies and they will, you know, do their stitching and it looks so nice when they, when they're finished. It's like they know what it's going to look like. I never know. I don't know if this looks like shingles or not. But I want it to be kind of like a seed stitch where there's a lot of stitches. And if you don't know what a seed stitch is, um, well, you can first of all just type it in and Google it. And there's all kinds of videos on how to do it. But it's just basically um, in and out stitches. And they're small. And... You can change the the size of them, like you could make them like a V shape or double two stitches right in a row, and they're scattered like chicken feed. And you scatter it. I was going to name this something, and I um, was uh, I was looking up this era and this uh, time during the Dust Bowl, and the movie came up, or the book, uh, by Steinbeck. I um, can't remember what's his first name, but um, he wrote The Grapes of Wrath, and... Honestly, I went and I watched the movie, and I don't ever remember seeing that movie. But I felt like I read read the book, so I don't know if it was something I read in school. But I think I'd like to read it because I think it's it's got. getting too short so I thought well I could name it the grapes of wrath this journal cover or this journal for that but I don't know it was a pretty sad story so I don't really I want to share the history of this time, but I don't want to go through people's hardships like that. If I can help it. But it is history, and that's what, you know, happens. And I'm not sure if I like that, but sometimes I just don't know if I like it and I can sometimes I take it out most of the time I don't I just I just let it go oh, my little things are flying all over so I'm gonna need these three strands mm. how much time have I got on there oh my gosh it's almost 30 minutes and I I haven't got anywhere. I mean, this is slow. Slow working. So I guess what I'll do is I'll uh, stop my video. And I'll finish off this little roof. And then I will actually start doing a backing. But I'm going to use a different um, piece of fabric. than I Another... 
one that, and then I can just kind of undo it. I could do this though, I could undo it. Hmm. Let's see. And maybe I'll get a better, some better glasses. Actually, I'm going to get this um, phone holder that you can put around your neck, like if you want to watch TV in the car or something, I guess, hands-free. Or not when you're driving, I mean, as a passenger. <laughs> um, but I thought I could use it, and then I can work in front of it, and it would zoom it so that I could see what I'm doing, even for my cross stitch. So we're gonna see if it works. If not, it will go back to Amazon. Okay, I said I was gonna stop. This is really tough sewing through this burlap. Okay, so let me um, pause you here, and then I'll uh, finish this, and I'll come back, okay? Okay, everyone, I'm back. Um, so I did a little more stitching here. Uh, I did those little box type uh, seed stitching up here on the roof and around the windows. Then in the background here, I just did some straight running stitches with kind of a um, dark tan color. Um, and then I used that and did the um, suspenders on these little boys and um, just, you know, to fill this part in, I put a little daisy flower on top of her dress. And I may go back and do some more stitching in the background, but it takes a long time and I didn't want to spend too much more time on it um, for this video. I wanted to get the video out. So uh, then the other thing I did was I decided to... Um, just put this little doily that I had. Well, it's out of a large uh, piece of of uh, crocheted uh, doily, and I just cut it the the circles out. So I stitched that down, and then I put this piece of fabric in here, and then I was going to come up the middle here. I've only got two left to do. I thought I'd show you on camera and do a, a what is a pistol stitch. So um so you, in this case you come up at the middle and then you wrap it like three times and then I'm going back down to this edge here. And I don't have my pillow for this. <laughs> I never have the right things at the right time. Uh see there is a knot now. Darn. Hold on, let me see if I can get it out without, okay, all right, it's still there. Okay, and then I'll come back up here in the center, and again, one, two, three, and then you, you know, just pull it down so you can get to the edge of wherever you're going to go to and then just slowly come down so you have the knot there and then I thought I would put a red button in that section oh. that's not the red button I wanted I don't know that's not too bad though or do I want this bigger one I've got it upside down, so maybe. And I thought I'd stitch maybe a stem coming down here. There's still a lot more that I would do. I am. I, uh, I would put buttons in here, long in here. I just. Um, it just takes a long time. It's you. You can do whatever you want, whatever you fancy. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I have little tiny red buttons that 
you know, would look cute in in uh, maybe every other little scalloped edge or up in here in these center flowers. Um, just stuff, you know, you just put as much stuff as you want. Um, so let's see, do I want to put this one? I think I do. Let's do this red one. And that's why, you know, it's hard. Um, I, I can't put the back on till I just see that, okay, it's done. Um, and you'll know, you know, when that time comes, when it's done. And, oh, I cannot ever find where the... why it's so hard to maneuver my needle there. <laughs> well, I guess I can't get through. I went twice. I guess that's enough. I'll tie it off. Uh, am I... Yeah, I'm looking through my right glasses. Just, I have glasses everywhere. Different strengths and it just goes on and on and if you're like me and you're getting to the age where you know it's hard to see then you've got to have glasses for every single thing you do okay so that's it for that I'm going to um, like I said I probably do some green type of a stem going down from this flower to the bottom and this is half of it so this is our front and then this will be our back cover okay so now to put the um hold on a second i just feel like i got sometimes you get i get um fingerprint on my glasses and it blurs everything okay so i did two backs and i i did uh, this one pretty much wrong um, I was thinking I did it the correct way, but this one, so what I did is I cut this one and you can do it this way too. If you don't, let's say you don't have enough fabric or, you know, you're low on it. Um, just cut it an inch larger than your design. And then you're going to fold in a half inch here. And then you can just do a running stitch across the top of this and leave the raw edges. So if you don't want raw edges on your piece, you can do this one. Let me find a corner. So you um, fold in, let's see, you fold in um, half, half inch and I press mine and then <clears throat> you set your um, work inside of that frame, I guess is what I will call it, the best you can. And I just not, I'm not seeing correctly. <clears throat> I try these glasses. Okay, that's better. Gosh. Okay, so... Um, after you fold it in everywhere a half inch, you're going to set this inside so you can um, fold it again. And so I think you need to cut it an inch and a half bigger than this is. Um, mine's not finished stitching, so that means it'll shrink up even more. But this right now it started with um, 12 by 9, 9 by 12, and now it's... Um, Eight and a half by eleven and a half. So I've shrunk it a half inch now since I started by you know stitching blocks together and so forth. So then what you're gonna do is let's see, let's work it this way, I think. You're going to turn this over like so and um, use either these little clips 
which you can find these on Amazon really inexpensive. You don't have to buy those expensive ones that the quilters buy. Um, then you have this section here, and you're going to fold it down so that it meets the edge right here. Am I in screen? So let me see. So it me meets this long edge of your page <clears throat> of your project. And then you fold your half, you know, your half inch up to meet that. And then you're going to fold that over, which like so. And I think, um, I think this is a little wider than it should be because it should meet up. It should look where these two pieces meet. And I think uh, it's the wrong measurement. And that could be because this is um, still not finished, so therefore it's not shrunk enough to be um, the exact size. So you go all the way around that. It's It sounds complicated, but it's not. I like to just keep going in the same direction. Let's try this corner. Um, I just keep going in the same direction. Down. And then fold this in like so then this gets folded down and then this gets folded like this so see now you have that little miter miter corner like that let me do this down If you want to do this, you don't have to go to this much trouble. It's up to you whether you want a nice finished edge. That's all this is. It's just to get the edge, a finished edge here. So there's your little point there. And then you just keep going down just like that. And then fold it in. Fold this in. Fold this back over. Yeah, this, this side is just a little too wide, I think. So if this happens, you just open it up and do a little trimming uh, of your fabric, you know, if you didn't cut it exact. So that's basically that. And then this is on the inside of your... Now, um, I've done these where I didn't stitch anything down. I just left it like this, which you can do. I have... Let's see, is this one? Yeah. So this one, um, instead of um, wrapping it around, I just went up here to the raw edge. I turned this one under, and um, yeah, I just turned it under so it would be finished on that edge, and then I just did blanket stitches over the edge. And I'm, on this one, currently coming back and doing another row of blanket stitch so that it's really stitched in nice and then um, the other thing you can do too is um, um, just take a piece of a strip of fabric I don't know if I have a strip let's just say this is one let me move this out of the way I mean, it's, these are very primitive type sewing, so you can do whatever you want. So if you wanted to do primitive type, you can just lay your fabric on top like this. Well, you have to cover this part with something because you don't want all this to show. So you would um, put a layer of fabric here. And uh, in that case, I would probably, um, fuse it on with the uh, heat and bond um, 
or fusible webbing uh, wonder under whatever you have and that way your uh, fabric would be uh, stuck down really well and then you would just take your other piece of fabric that you want to put along the edge and you and I've done it where I've added a different colors of fabric um, so I would, you know, if I only had this much of one kind of fabric, then I could take another fabric that I like with it and just use that and, you know, just keep going. So then what you would do is stitch, um, I don't think I have thread in a, just a little bit of thread here just to show you. Um, you just do a stitch like this. Or running I'm having the hardest time with this um, I think it's just because it's so thick with the the block that we just did the uh, log cabins it's going through a lot of seams at one time which you can't even hardly tell it's log cabin anymore well oh and I put a date on here 1936 and I put my friend's initial KT <laughs> I didn't put my own. I might go back and change it and make it my own. I don't know what I was thinking. So anyway, you know, that that looks cute, too. I really like, you know, that look. This is a uh, piece of cross-stitch that I cut off of my, my cross-stitch before I was framing it while I was framing. So I thought that was cute. And I had cut off this little tiny piece. And I thought, you know what, that would be cute. I could just stick that somewhere as another element. Could even um, use it for a stem or something. Anyway, like I said, you could just do whatever you like. But I thought that was kind of cool for this primitive looking um, project. Even that up there would be fine. Something like that. I stitched this around in um, off-white and I wonder if I should have done it differently. And this is a herringbone stitch um, or one of the ladies that I watch, she calls it the TP stitch. So it's like a stitch that goes over like this. So you stitch up here and then you come back and stitch from there to there makes a teepee and then you just keep doing that and then you can go back and uh, stitch over that that X part just with another color just to give it a little bit more of a design factor so and you can make stitches up any way you want you can you know I did these were very this has got a knot in it I was testing out this stitch and it's a cross, but as you go, um, I can't remember exactly how I did it, but when you go back and do the next cross, you go underneath this stitch and then you go through a loop and it makes these little knots kind of things in the center. And they're very abstract looking at this point because I'm not, I wasn't very good at it, but I left it because, um, I want to remember that stitch. So I'll probably, you know, take a picture of um, this when it's finished, like this one here. And I will be able to go back and see what I did uh, and reference. Um, like here's a lot of seed stitching here, seed stitching here. This is just, I followed the line of the fabric and double stitched it there. In here, I put little X's in, in between the flowers. Um, a little um, box down here, and I did a little tiny, like a woven thing, and did a little tiny stitch in each area that crosses where it crossed over. And a lot of, you know, just straight stitching. A little um, feather stitch there. Buttons. I think yeah, I'm done with this one though. I should have put some more stitches in there.
but you can also um, if you put your fa fabric down and you don't sew it over the edge um, or even if you did you could come back in here and do some you know tiny little basting stitches that would where you don't go through the whole thing just run the stitches across it'll give another cute little effect on your inside as well which I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to canter stitch um, you know like this without going through the front because with the um, felt and everything you'll have enough room to do that all right so I guess that's it I don't know um, I hope you guys enjoy you know watching what I do and you know I'll keep trying to do it as long as there's people that are willing to to watch but maybe next week I'll do something different I do want to make a uh, on Rachel um, channel um, Roxy creations she has a project going right now that I wanted to do because it's a needle roll and it's called a hos hos whiff hos whiff uh, or a housewife um, needle roll and I I want something like that because my needle book is great but I have to keep turning the pages all the time but if I had a roll I could just roll it out and I would see everything that I need right in front of me so it wouldn't be really big it would only just be um, when I have to move my stitch area and that's like in here uh, where my camera is I have to move everything from my sewing space to here and that would be an easy travel you know I could just pick it up and go so all right um, I will see you guys um, if you're just watching the slow stitch I'll see you next Sunday if you're my regular viewers on my journal making I will see you on Monday so have a great day and uh, enjoy your your weekend bye <music>